banked cachet that they've gotten for some of these deals, mainly the Panthers, in the last couple of years. My Colts could definitely use him. Could definitely use him. What are they going to give up? Ain't going to be anything special. Like it's, it's, We're still talking about an outside wide receiver here. Now, I know the price tag will probably be big on the back end still, but... I don't think there's enough in Indianapolis land as a new team with a new quarterback, or not really a new team, just a young team. The Panthers have all kinds of problems. That's my other team. There's no way they have anything. They can't make any kind of deal like this anymore. They already got fleeced by the Bears two years ago. They're getting fleeced all over the league. They'd get fleeced by the Raiders if they do this deal. Now, your boys are in the market. They're in the market, and I really don't know why. Brandon Cooks is uh, going to be on the show right. for at least a week. He just had an infection off a knee surgery, and that sounds scary. That's brutal. Uh, so there's a need now, but your boys need a running back, and your boys but you're need but you're, some Exactly, and you're going to run into the same problem the Raiders are, that there's only one ball, there's not enough to go around. This guy, if he starts complaining again, do you want that on your team? And that's the problem, you know. I mean, listen, he played like eight, nine years with Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay where he had his best years. Um, he wants to get back to that. He wants to get back to a guy like Aaron Rodgers. Dak Prescott's not that guy. Even when Amari Cooper was on the Cowboys, he was underutilized. Now, on the on the Browns until this year, um, he was getting a lot of catches and doing a lot in Cleveland. So, uh, you know, no wide receiver is ever going to be happy. It's like a point guard, a shooting guard in the NBA. Unless he gets 30 shots a game, he, he's going to walk off the court and be a little bit uh, peeved. So wherever he goes, unless he gets his way, he's going to be the same guy. You're just you're going to get this guy. He's now older. Uh, you know, he's going on his 12th season in the NFL. He's looking at his career. He's starting to look at now he's four touchdowns away from 100, looking at his Hall of Fame legacy, um, and he wants a Super Bowl championship. So, I mean, th- those are some of the things that, you know, you're going to give up draft picks or, you know, you're going to trade for this guy. What are you bringing into the locker room besides the attitude that's leaving Las Vegas? Like He's still a great player. He's dynamite. And I do think the attitude is a lot like you're going to see with Tariq Hill in the next four or five weeks. Like this, these are receivers that are used to getting the ball their way. A lot of touches. Like just, yeah, throw targets, 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 targets targets a game. I don't care if I'm covered, throw it up. I'll make it happen. Like Tariq's even saying this on Monday night to Huntley. He's, He's just pointing, throw it. Deep, just whatever you got to do. By the way, Huntley overthrew him after he was complaining about it on the sideline and put the Jets on there, Tariq. But Devontae wants to go to two teams, the Saints and the Jets. Why? His quarterback in Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers. His quarterback in the Raiders before the O'Connell and Minshew experiment, Derek Derek Carr. Carr. So, like, he's comfortable with these guys, and that's where he wants to go because he knows he has the rapport. And sometimes the rapport is the trust, where if Aaron Rodgers knows I've got nowhere else to go, my last resort is throwing it to the sideline, throwing it to the quarter in Devontae's direction because he will make it happen. The last thing Devontae will have happen is me, is Derek Carr or Aaron Rodgers, is an interception. He'll fight for that ball for me or Derek Carr. And again, like for the Saints, I think they're set. I think right. they're set. They got Sneed. They've got uh, Alave. They have got Kamara rocking right now. They've got a great offense. The Jets, how many more of these kind of deals are we going right. to do for old man Rodgers for a Super Bowl this year? Or and maybe next if he gets two more years. I don't out know, of him. man. And here's I just the thing, like too, it's... and you're dead on with that. So with Carr, he had 180 targets, 100 receptions. Uh, last year, 175 targets, 103 receptions. And now this year, he's already up to a third, almost 30 targets and in uh, three games. So, I mean, I, I don't understand what the complaints are other than the quarterback that's throwing you these, these passes. You know, he's caught 18 of the 27 targets for one touchdown. Uh, his, his, obviously, the touchdowns have gone down. But listen, it, it's not just the, the quarterbacking. It's some of these cornerbacks. And you're a slower wide receiver at the end of your career. So that's that's the thing as well, you know. So, yes, he still is one of the best pair of hands in the NFL, but you look at the Houston Texans. There's only enough ball to go around, yeah. uh, whether it's Joe Mixon, whether it's whether it's Stephon Diggs. You know, at the end of the day, your quarterback is is listening to the offensive coordinator. He can't be like, well, yeah, well, I, I got to get this guy the ball more. You know, depending on what the game is, sometimes we're down two touchdowns. We have to throw it more. 
You know, we might be up two touchdowns. We're going to run it more. I mean, some of these guys, uh, it, it kind of irks me that, you know, three games in, you're already panicking like, hey, I'm going to have a terrible, disastrous year, right. and that's going to affect me. This guy's made a lot of money in the NFL, uh, and and now, you know, because he wants to be traded to the right situation, it kind of puts the the – uh, Raiders behind the eight ball to, to possibly do a bad deal, which you don't want to do. And these receivers want to win, and these receivers also want to be the reason you're winning. And the Devontae Adams, like, he's great, man. He is top he's 10 great, great. in my book. But that's why we have you on our team. But I also <laughs> feel some friction between him and the head coach. Like, there's, there is... Somewhat of a my way or the highway, which I probably kind that of with ag- Josh McDaniels when he was there. I, I mean, agree, I agree. But the Antonio Pierce coach is not putting up with it. Josh no, McDaniels right. is putting up with it. Josh McDaniels is making concessions for the better players because he knows that they're going to be more valuable than the others, which I get. And coaches all over every form and fashion of football do that. Antonio Pierce ain't playing that game. He's treating Devontae just like any other receiver that is on the list, whether it's Trey Tucker, Jacoby Myers, who's become a big target for them. It's just like Devontae Adams is not getting the ball thrown his way, and he believes it is a combination of the bad quarterbacks they have on their team or maybe even the play calling and the coaching. They only throw 24 times in a winning effort against the Browns. They only complete 14 of those 24 passes against the Browns. Here's the thing against the Browns. They won the game. I know. You're two and two. Two and two. Right in the thick of things. Other than the Kansas City Chiefs being four and oh, everybody in that division are two and two. Rodgers and Carr could both not be starting by week 10. Minshew or O'Connell might form into Pro Bowl quarterbacks by week 10. And, And here's the thing, too. The two teams he wants to go to are two and two. Jets and Saints, two and two. It's all about Devontae, man. And like I'd be like, hey, I want to go to the Chiefs or the Vikings. Now wouldn't you want to go to the two four and teams? But for the coach to come out today, and there's reports from Adam Schefter from ESPN saying this, that he is considering the trade possibility. Oh, yeah. Well, no, if you don't want to be there, but I don't right. need you in, exactly. in there stirring things up. There's in the, the door. Don't let it hit you where the, the good, good Lord, Lord split you. Yeah. <laughs> and I yep. think that's what Antonio Pierce and the Raiders. Well, listen, are Antonio, about. and listen, last week before this Browns game, he was dealing with a, a, one of his defensive guys. He didn't want to tackle anybody. Called and him out. It, that's right. Called him out. He's like, listen, one guy's making business decisions business on decisions. his own. Decisions. Those aren't our decisions. You know, he's we got to do something. I mean, he's he's got guys on both sides of the ball now that he's got to worry about. Well, again, he was talking about a game they lost to the Panthers at home with their backup quarterback. They, and they quarter- should be three and one right now. And then what happened the next week? They won the game. Yeah. So I think Antonio Pierce. As far as the wins and losses are going, he's on the right side of this conversation. Hello. Right. And now you Thank got you, you now you got Denver, Pittsburgh, Rams, Chiefs, Bengals. Hello. V- yeah. Very few games uh are they not going to be fighting for their lives. I hope Antonio Pierce holds his ground. And honestly, if right. Devontae wants to leave, then get out of there and the Raiders, if they can get something for him. They might be better off in the long run. Like, of course, he's a home run threat. Of course, he has a mismatch problem all over the place. Of course, cerebral best receiver, the best in-between-the-ears receiver in the league. I'm sorry. He he knows what he's doing out there. But when you have to make one guy happy on your offense. You make 52 other guys miserable. (laughs) Or you're just trying. You're pigeonholing. You're forcing. And you're not taking what the defense gives you. I love what Josh Allen said, even though he denies that this is about Stephon Diggs, but two weeks ago after they blank the uh, – or didn't really blank them, they scored, but still, like, they, they trounced the Jacksonville Jaguars. Right. And it's because he had the option to go anywhere he wants to. Whatever the defense gives us, that's what we're going to take. If we have a diva receiver on the outside that I have to get 12 targets to, <laughs> that's going to totally mess up the game plan against well, this wouldn't particular it make up your, defense. Wouldn't it mess up your brain? Oh, yeah. If you're the quarterback and you're like in the back of your brain, you're like, I got to get that guy 12 touches. 
Now, I'm not worried about my tight end or my other receivers, my guy out of the backfield, or even what the guy's calling. I'm like, now I'm, I'm kind of always looking that way. And it's more than that. Like, if you if you can watch and you just script plays and you just watch one guy, whether it's a running play or a passing play, sometimes a receiver can really tip it off if he is upset. I was telling you guys about the guy from Buffalo University at Buffalo last week, Victor Snow, who missed like the majority of that game. If you were watching him, he was telling you this is a run play. It's not a pass. I'm not going to get the ball. Yeah, this play's going to be over there too. I'm down <laughs> set hut. I'm just going to stand here. If Devontae has that kind of attitude breaking the oh huddle or God. even lining up, right. like the NFL's super smart, man. Cornerback safeties are just like your guy Pete Rose. They yeah. are looking for all the idiosyncrasies oh, yeah. all over the place. And if you're if you break the huddle and just have a moper kind of look because you hate this team, you hate the play call. You are laying out Zamir White. You're laying out uh, O'Connell or Minshew. They are just going to tee off on you because you're giving away the play because of your attitude. Like, there's a lot here that's going on emotionally for these Vegas Raiders, and it's on the head coach. And I, I, if if these reports are true, which I think they are, I'm on Antonio Pierce's side. He is looking for the future and the full 53 instead of just making one guy happy. Well, and Antonio Pierce, as a new head coach, wants to have this job as long as possible. And, and th- you don't want to go into this putting out a bunch of fires. So true. Or playing favorites. And, oh, and exactly. trying to be one guy to yeah, one guy, yeah. one guy you to know, another Devontae guy. Adams, he did that for right. him. And here's the thing. Mark Davis has to be the owner that comes in and backs his head coach. Right. If he is is like Dan Snyder used to be on the, the commanders, um, and he tried to be friends with all the star players because that's that was him. I want to hang out with these right. guys. If that becomes that, your, that's more of a priority for you than winning football games, you're, you're screwed. And, and so Antonio Pierce has to be like, listen, Mark, you got you to gotta back me on this. If we have to trade this guy, we'll trade them, him. If you need to sit down with me and we need to discuss options here to make this guy happy and say, listen, we all have to be on the same page here. We know you're the star, but listen, we're tr- also trying to win football games like you said. You, we're tr- you're, the bottom line is, and th- this is to simplify for everybody, at the end of the day, your job's to win. How you win Whatever you do, doesn't matter. Uh, th- exactly. And I, honestly, Johnny Bench put it on X, and he talked about this. And Will Clark said the same thing. Pete Rose was was about trying to get five hits or six hits a game to try to win the game. You know, Will Clark was like, Pete Rose was one of the greatest hitters when it came to trying to get a hit. This is the hardest thing to for me to get over to my 15U team. You're in the middle of a game competing. You're, you're, you're not just competing against that pitcher. You're competing against that entire team. We need everybody fighting in one direction. If, if Devontae Adams decides, I don't want to be a part of the rest of the crew, they're screwed, like you said. In everything, every practice, every film session, every, everything that now happens, you have one guy. Listen, I played with a guy like that, Kevin Mitchell. When he wasn't happy, none of us were happy. Right. Right. He came back Perfect one year example. three days late from the All-Star break, punched Davey Johnson in the face in, in a scuffle that they had. And if it wasn't for Ray Knight being so tough, it would have been a, a worse thing that happened. And, and Ray snuffed it out quickly. Like, we're not doing this. But my point being is, after that moment, the rest of the season was a wash. It was just basically guys were scared to death to walk by Kevin's locker. The the media wouldn't talk to him. They'd go to other people to ask about him. Exactly. It, it just it exactly. became an absolute nightmare because of the friction one guy created. And that's not what you're trying to do. You're trying to have a family in there and how to build a family. And if you can't have that kind of uh, movement in there as Antonio Pierce is trying to build on, you got to get rid of the one dude. I think, or you, you're going to eventually get rid of me, and that's not what Antonio Pierce wants. I feel like the tea leaves are real easy to read on this. Uh, this is an end of a relationship in Las Vegas. He will be gone, and it's because of him wanting to be gone. And Antonio Pierce, just like everything we're saying, he's off in his own direction. New head coach trying to establish a standard right now for everyone, right. all hands on deck. Where could he go where a coach does whatever a player wants, where, I don't know, a player can go during minicamp to 
our Egypt and then uh, show up Jesus. whenever he wants. The and Jets. then all of a sudden, a bunch yep. of complaints on false starts that aren't his fault. And the team, the receivers need to get together. Not his fault. Coach is going to let me say, do whatever I want. And general manager is going to pick the players that I tell him to pick. Devontae Adams is going to be a Jet in the next two weeks. He's going to be a Jet in the next two weeks. Which it, Bank on it. it these precedents, and we talk about it in basketball, we talk about it in every sport when you hold out or you're you're basically saying, I need a change. You're, you're That guy, when he goes to the next team... He's bringing it with him. He's bringing that with him. Yeah. That baggage travels with that player. And so he's going to come right in, create friction. Whether or not there is friction, he's going to bring it into there and it's going to be like, oh my God, this guy's on our team now? I thought we were doing things the right way. Now now we're going to you know give this guy his own way. The Clippers end up winning the NBA Finals this past year? No. No? It was the Brooklyn Nets then, right? Philadelphia 76ers? 76ers. <laughs> How's James Harden doing today? He going to be well, he fine. He going to be just fine, man. He's Counting them kookaroos. Hundreds of millions of dollars to think about being fine. <laughs> All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back and uh, talk some more wild card MLB. Still no score what? in Houston what? as the what? openers... Have it right now going on against the Houston Astros. See if they can scratch out a few runs. Be right back on the Rob Dibble Show with Ben Duck.